There are an estimated almost 50,000 house fires a year in the United States of America due to electrical failures. And as a result of that, almost 400 deaths. Today, we're actually here at my pastor's house. I've had my eye on this electrical service for about two years. My pastor's got the hellfire thing on lockdown. However, I'm concerned about house fire. Check out our shorts here on 60 amp meter base and utility line connections because whoo, I can't wait to get started and upgrade this to 200 amps. Let's go. Here's our 200 amp disconnect and uh, fail. 230.91. Overcurrent protection shall be an inter integral part of the service disconnecting means or shall be located immediately adjacent thereto. This unfortunately doesn't have fusing or breaker. So not gonna work today. Dang. Parts run early. So we're inside, we've got this old Pushmatic ripped apart and we're ready to yank it off the wall and put the new panel in. So I just wanna give you a quick update, back outside, back to work. If you're wondering about Pushmatic, maybe you're buying or selling a home, or you're a home inspector, check out this quick video on some of the hazards of Pushmatic panels. Time to go to the roof and cut the weather head free. Obviously this is de-energized. The linemen haven't shown up. <clears throat> if you wanna see me de-energizing the service, check that video here. Luke's in the basement tackling the electrical panel. I'm doing the exterior work. We've got a hot tub to hook up. It's time to rock and roll. I'm gonna clean up the outside of the house. Looks like we've got cut wires here. I need to inquire with the customer to see what of this is in service. But needless, I've gotta relocate this D-mark, put my meter base maximum height, trailer panel below that, and then core penetration to the house. Get this cleaned up before end of day. All right, got a mortar patch kit for that. We always do site visits before service upgrades. So, should be prepared for it. Okay, on a service upgrade like this, when I'm making a materialist, I think in a logical progression. All right, I start at the weather head, I do it the same every time, and I just work through the materials that I'm gonna need. Part, fitting, bolts, anchors, and just work my way down to the electrical panel in a linear progression. We also have a cheat sheet called the Master Material List. I can copy and paste a comprehensive list, strike the six or seven line items I'm not gonna need for this job, and then boom, publish to the warehouse, and now they're picking and pulling parts and we're off and running. So at this point, the anchor, since I've got all the equipment removed, my anchor is my meter base. I'm gonna set my meter base directly under that hole because I don't want a second penetration through the roof and I don't want to be repairing the roof. That's not my skill set. I could wrap my head around it. Not today though. So I'm gonna mount my meter base directly underneath that hole. I'm gonna put my trailer panel underneath my meter base and I'm gonna think of limitations such as this hole and major equipment such as meter, trailer panel, which is kind of a crusty name for a nice piece of equipment. It's, a, it's my service disconnect. It's got my overcurrent protection and as well as got, it's an eight space 16 circuit panel. So when it comes to hot tub, outdoor lights, um, irrigation system, anything that needs power back here, a shed, a barn, a mini barn, they're gonna be able to come right off this panel without having to penetrate the house every time. We'll take care of that once and then it's set. Oh, the meter base is landed. Let me use a little dab of no lux and put that hub on. Meter hubs are configured. They're wider on one side than the other side. There's the ability to offset one way or the other. In this case, I'm gonna offset away from the structure based upon the orientation of my hub. So I'm gonna line up with my trim board and I don't have to cut through it or have my riser at a cocked angle. So I kind of like sometimes to get the equipment mounted before I start whaling on it because now the uh, tap guns are going to hold it in place for me. Let's go ahead and put uh, a two inch offset 
meter offset is what it's called, two inch meter offset in the bottom here and mount the trailer panel underneath. So again, I've raised the meter up as high as possible so the trailer panel is not sitting too low to the ground. I want it definitely up and out of the snow, but I also want it to be as convenient as possible. Juxtaposition, this was state of the art. This was probably one of the first breakers to come out in the 1930s. Everything prior to that had been fuses and people were like, look, it resets, no running to the hardware store. Like, truly mind blowing. People who are used to drilling this at home for the first time as a DIYer and they're like laboring and leaning into it and then you try an SDS Plus for the first time and it butters through the brick or the block or the poured concrete, whatever it is, and it's a revelation. So initially we unboxed a 200 amp disconnect and unfortunately it didn't have integrated overcurrent protection and as required by the code, Overcurrent protection must be in the service disconnect or immediately adjacent there too. In the house, not good enough. So we've swapped out to this 200 amp trailer panel. I love these things because they've got plenty of access on top, easy to land right underneath the meter base. Obviously a 200 amp main breaker, plug on neutral, check that out right there. Each side, plug on neutral, eight space, 16 circuit with feed through lugs to go right into our panel. So we've got exterior circuit access, it's called the trailer panel, which is not a glamorous name, but it is the right piece of equipment for this application. I love these things. I honestly don't like this part very much. One, I'm gonna be drilling through this aluminum. I'm gonna pull my hat, which I've got from Scott at Everyday Home Repairs. If you don't watch this channel, this channel is hot. If, that's if you own a home. If you don't own a home, disregard. <laughs> but drilling through the aluminum, Man, it's brutal. These little aluminum shavings, they come off fast, they come off hot, and it's a trip to the emergency room if you're not wearing eye protection. I'm not exaggerating. So I'm gonna tuck up, it's got side shield protection. I've gotta go through the aluminum, I've gotta go through this, the old wooden soffit original, then I've gotta get a perfectly straight, true hole right up through, hello. I'm just putting some dry fertilizer down. Nice, you're good. Okay. Appreciate it. No problem. Then I've gotta match this up and go straight through the roof and make a penetration there as well. That's perfectly in line and if I'm a little bit off I can't just bend the two inch rigid it ain't gonna work <laughs> so I got to true it up again and then build the supports on the rooftop which is kind of clunky and that's one place you got to stick around and watch this I need your help there's no question I've not found a product for this we've built a couple different things and it's all kind of clunky we've seen some unistrut chopped to pre pieces so I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna do you're gonna hate it and then you're gonna give me some advice how's that for a deal out. You see how much movement there is in the roof? See that? There's been water infiltration. This caught connection was all there was for a long time and it wasn't tight. It was all dry rotted. So we're going to use a roof boot. That's a code violation to have a penetration like that. In fact, I can see the dry rot. Oh, I can pull the roof decking apart with my fingers. <sighs> Thankfully, there's a rafter right there. So we've got some, some support underneath. If you can stick a screwdriver, oh, I can stick it about two mil into the rafter. I'm not worried about that. If I could, every now and then you find a rotted framing member and you can take a small flathead and push right through the whole framing member. And then you realize, no, I could push my finger through it. It's so rotted out. It's not that bad this time. <clears throat> I'm using my feet to brace the hole saw because <clears throat> my pilot bit's not gonna catch anything. Okay, so two things. Uh, I did take a little more precaution than what I told you and showed you. I, um, one, I'm using a carbide hole saw because bimetal hole saws will just get torn up on the shingles. And then two, I was aware of my framing member location before I lined up my meter base. So that last thing you want is come down and land right on a rafter and have to drill new holes and patch roof and move me. Oh, man, it's disgusting. So far, so good. Let's see if that lines up. Easy. This is heavy enough, strong enough. You can really blow out your soffit when you're pushing it through that second layer. And you want your meter base to be secure because you don't want anything falling off the house. 
<laughs> that's the one benefit of cutting it now, which I will do. So this, you've got to know your utility code. I've got two dimensions to respect. One is from deck to weatherhead, I can't be more than five feet of pipe length. I've got to be supported with two rigid supports in this case because the riser is the mast and that makes sense because we're going underneath a, a large silver maple tree in the backyard that could drop a branch and yank this line off the house and leave energized power sitting like a duck in a puddle in the backyard. And then two, I need a minimum height of 13.6 above grade to my attachment point and the lowest point of my service drop. So that belongs to the utility. They make these connections and all of this is customer property and expense. The utility company will do maintenance for free, but improvements in Indiana, the U Indiana Utility Regulatory Committee has said by regulation that if utility companies can recoup their investment within 30 months, then the outlay is free to the customer. Anything that's gonna take more than 30 months, two and a half years to recoup, now they're able to build, bill that delta, that additional cost direct to the customer on a project basis. So in this case, it's free. Besides the cost of materials, permits, self-certification tag, which is me, my license, connected to this project, uh, along with a permit and the cost of labor. So what does this project cost? Well, I would say a floor cost on an easy project is two grand, up to three grand, 3,500. In this case, we really don't have any complexities. So if you sold this for three grand, rolled two guys out, knocked it out in a day, or one good guy by himself in an eight, nine hour day, that's good money. There it is. That is threading right in there. That looks good. One more regulation to bear in mind. I've got to have one strap between the meter cabinet and where it penetrates. I'm going to put it right in that trim board, two hole strap, and lug that thing down. Look at it from the side and make sure it lined up the way. Oh, yes. Beautiful. This is XHHW wire. It's sunlight resistant. You don't want to use THHN here. It's going to lose its outer, outer jacket and then continue. Yeah, within like six months and then it'll continue deteriorating. All right, this is the roof boot. This is absolutely positively required by code. This is a relatively low slope roof. I'm gonna say about a 512 pitch. If you've got a steep roof above about 40 degrees, then you need to get a steep roof roof boot. If you've got a flat roof, like a TPO, EPDM, something of that nature that's um, less, see asphalt shingles, I think the minimum roof pitch is like 212, 312, something in that range. So if it's not asphalt, don't use this product, use something else. Use something that's appropriate to the roof type and you absolutely have to be flashed in a roofing code compliant manner. But this is the standard because this is the standard roof in Indiana. I'm gonna say 95% of homes have this roof type and are of a 312 to 1212 pitch. Guys, I'm not proud of it, it just is what it is.
All right, now that the rooftop's done, we can wrap up by putting on this two inch two hole strap that I promised you earlier. Using some short spacks. Man, these things have great threads, incredible bite, triple guard coating. If you want beef, SPACs give you beef. So now that is code compliant. I need to make wiring terminations, but I'm just gonna hold off until my conduit's complete, and then I'll get to all wire at the same time. I'm eager to get this done, because as soon as we're terminated to the line side of this 200 amp service disconnect, then we can call the utility safely and roll them back out here to get re-energized in a timely fashion. One time a customer called me at midnight. She's a nurse, she got off shift, she went out to eat, she did a little shopping. She gets home, it's 12.30 in the morning. I see a call from her. I'm like, I, I'm woken up, I'm asleep. I'm like, hello Shannon. She's like, uh, Joel, my power's not on. Do you know anything? I'm like, I'm so sorry. Let me call the utility company back. I ring, ring the utility company emergency line and they're like, Yep, you're still in process. We'll be out soon. <laughs> Lo and behold, they're out about two o'clock in the morning to reconnect your power, poor lady. Ah, so you just gotta get on it and make that call as soon as possible to minimize, minimize the schedule on your end to give them as much latitude as possible. Oh, you know, I've got something to measure off inside. I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna grab an interior measurement off the hose spigot right there, over, up. I'll make sure we penetrate. First time, right time. Got something to measure with. Let's dance inside and dance back out. Lucas is making great progress down here. The new panel has landed. It is, still, here's the tug test. <laughs> okay, all right, it's gonna be fine. Lucas is running from this box to the hot tub disconnect with 6.3 Romex. We're gonna transition to THHN exterior and put that in a liquid tight conduit for a hot tub, but you can't tell the family. It's a secret. Shh, the hot tub's for the holidays. We're taking the dimension off that hose um, spigot that's penetrating the exterior of the home to the free space we've got here. And we're gonna try to land right on top of that. And that exact number from center to center is 10 and a half. Let's go make it happen. Let's check it. Center, oh, beautiful. Beautiful, we're gonna come straight out of there. We're gonna pop down. We're gonna penetrate a little high in the base so our SCR is the chance to kind of nicely fold into the top of the panel there. There it is. So I don't even know why this STS Plus is out here, but I need the max. That's what my drill runs. And so I'm just having to crank these things apart, which are, of course, Super tight on there. I'm gonna grab some. Ah, alleviate my wrists. Grab some uh, pipe wrenches with cheater bars and just. Whew. Okay, almost there. It's kind of a delay. Is the temptation is annoyance. Let me put it that way. So we're M18 Milwaukee brushless. Pretty committed. I'm using the modified potato cannon to get through this brick. Oh, now the hole's drilled, it's time to try to get this SCR through a two inch conduit. And let me tell you what, I would not have chosen a two inch LB. This is gonna be difficult. There it is. That'll work. Uh. All right, slide that sucker on there. Three, four out conductors is the maximum in a four, two inch LB, you're absolutely right. Don't bring it up again. <laughs> now hopefully that's the right length. <laughs> All right, we're screwed. There's about six more feet. Are you sure you want to bend all that in? One inch, three, two, one. Oh, oh nap time. Oh. oh, here's my new favorite Jakari. It is my favorite strip tool. The only thing that I might be missing in my utilization of it is, I don't wanna 
pull out a utility knife blade after I've avoided using one is just getting that started, right? It comes off clean, but I shouldn't have to pull out another tool to get it to get it off. I, I can't do it with my gloved fingers. I can't get that insulation off. So Jakari is about nine out of 10 right now. It's just that final step. And again, maybe it's me, maybe I'm missing something. So if I am, drop it in the comments, but I'm not giving up on this at this point. I, I truly appreciate it. Lucas is making good progress downstairs, as you saw. And if you want more detailed conversation around landing exterior electrical equipment, check out this video here where we've got a step-by-step -step and an unusual situation. Boom. I want to make sure this is in the off position when the linemen are making up the connections on the pole. The last thing they want is for a load on the house to be in the house to be energized, breakers on. And then as they're making those connections, it's arcing before they have a chance to crimp it down because they're not going to kill it at the pole. They do it live at the weather head. Almost without exception, rain, snow, they slip the gloves on and they go to town. So thanks, Tim. So we're going to go ahead and Leave that in the off position, put the covers on, and the linemen are gonna put a ring around here to hold that in place. It's called a ring style meter cabinet. It's an Eaton. This is Siemens. Our uh, electrical supply house main one is a Siemens shop. So easy to get our hands on this stuff. And Nolox doesn't like to wipe off. I've got a gray slug native to the Midwest. It's called duck seal. And of course I'm putting it in as a draft stop to prevent the mixing of exterior hot humid air right into the interior of the home, particularly my electrical panel, which is on the other side. So I'm just gonna do my best to stuff that around, work it in. Boom, Lucas has pounded it out. We're all ready for the utility company. We're finishing up the hot tub. Wire's been pulled through the basement and we're ready to pop to the exterior and get it ready for the holidays. There are two distinct advantages. This panel, which is Squarety Home Line, has above the previous panel. One, it's not 63 years old. The useful life of electricity is really, it stops around 50 years. Anything that's over 50 years, in my opinion, at this point, is beyond its useful life. Now that may accelerate through the technological revolution that we're all in, as well as the energy revolution to cause things to expire more quickly. And then there's a ton more circuit space in this panel. So this is way further down the road than where we were this morning and makes for a much safer condition. Boom. Oh my gosh. It's 12.15 in the morning. The babies are sleeping. The linemen have left, the power is on. That's a lie. But this 200 amp service, next time it's gonna be a 2000 amp service. So subscribe to Electric Pro Academy for real skills to make real money.